everyone, I'm Gar- <coughs> I mean, I'm Flygon HG, and in this video, I'm going to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum using only Garchomp. Flag- I mean, I usually throw the rules of the challenge up on the screen, so here you go. But with that out of the way, let's get started. In this special version of Platinum, Professor Rowan gives Garchomp as a starter. So naturally, I name him the best, and then we use Dragon Rage to cleanse the early game of each and every Pokemon who crosses our path. We scorch the ground we traverse, leaving nothing but blue flames and ashes in our wake. With each new kill, our notoriety grows. Bards tell our tale in playful tunes that mask the horrors we wrought on our unsuspecting victims. Upon the bodies of fallen foes, we build our empire. Money flows fast like a raging river, and our dynasty quickly solidifies. Throughout our conquest, the flags of House Gar fly high at each spot where blood was spilled in combat. By the time we have two badges, everyone in Sinnoh has heard tell of their soon-to-be rulers. And if it were not yet etched in stone, our destiny is surely sealed as we venture deep within Wayward Cave, for what do we find there but the TM for Earthquake, granting the best his strongest and most reliable stab move with which to fell our now much higher leveled opponents. With this new move, we are sure to be unstoppable. Except that Fantina's three ghost types all have Levitate, making them immune to Earthquake and Return, forcing the best to resort to Dragon Rage, which isn't even enough to one-shot Duskull. I set up a Sandstorm to hopefully chip Duskull below 40 HP so that she falls to a Dragon Rage, but it doesn't work. So Fantina heals, the best gets nailed by Future Sight, and then Duskull does indeed fall. Haunter also doesn't fall to a single Dragon Rage, and unfortunately connects with a Confuse Ray. I don't want to face down Miss Magius before we've fully snapped out of Confusion, so I just set up another Sandstorm, avoiding a self-hit in the process. Unfortunately, Shadow Claw still connects. And crits. On the next turn, we snap out of Confusion, but Sandveil fails again, meaning that the best takes another chunk from Shadow Claw. Sandstorm damage brings Haunter into the red, so Fantina heals, meaning that we only have one turn of Sandstorm when Fantina's second specter goes down. As Miss Magius takes the field, the best and I find ourselves back against the wall. Dragon Rage does over 50%, but our foe's Citrus Berry means we'll need to hit her twice more, and sadly, a Shadow Ball does just a little too much. Our only hope is to set up Sandstorm and pray for a dodge, lest our dynasty fall as quickly as it came to be. But alas, the flags of House Gar fly at half-mast tonight, as the best is ruthlessly slain. New Garchomp who dis. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do here but try again and hope for better luck. Fortunately, House Gar has a long line of possible successors. Even if this takes a century, we will take our rightful place as champions. With the new best, I immediately go on the offensive against Duskull. Only once Fantina's used up her Super Potion and Duskull's been dropped back into the red do I set up Sandstorm so that we have more turns to work with against Haunter. Unfortunately, she still manages to connect with a Hypnosis and a Shadow Claw and a Confuse Ray, though an early wake up and great luck with Confusion where the best once again avoids hitting himself and then immediately snaps out of Confusion on the following turn means that miraculously we're at nearly full HP as Haunter falls. You can't ask for much more than that. The best hits Miss Magius with the first of three necessary dragon rages before our foe Citrus Berry activates, and she fires off her first Shadow Ball, which crits. Though fortunately, the best sassy nature means that he tanks the hit rather respectably. Our second dragon rage brings Miss Magius down into the red, and then... Her Shadow Ball misses, Sandstorm Chip takes her out, and House Gar has their heir apparent. Long live the second coming of the best. On his back, our noble house will claim dominion over Sinnoh, so help me Arceus. But before our crusade takes us out of Hearth Home City, we must face our rival Ice, who poses a particularly unique problem for the best in the form of an intimidating Staravia, who lowers our attack at the beginning of the fight and is immune to Earthquake and therefore cannot be one-shot. With Double Team and Endeavor, it's a small miracle we make it out of this fight in one piece. But setting aside the Endeavor Double Team shenanigans, getting our attack lowered by Intimidate is going to be a massive problem moving forward. Be it 
Aside from winged beasts or malicious sea serpents, this intimidation scourge threatens our very way of life. It has the potential to ruin all that we've already built and cleave the continued proliferation of house guards and, oh wait a minute, swords dance exists. And everyone knows that the only thing scarier than a Garchomp is a Garchomp who can dance. After earthquaking Maylene's fighting types for badge number four, Crasher Wake becomes the first victim of the Lord of the Dance. With the boost to offset the intimidate attack drop, the best lives up to his name by one-shotting Gyarados with Dragon Claw, Floatzel with Earthquake, and Quagsire with... You dare disrespect Garchomp? You dare deign to strike the head of House Gar? Death! Death to thee, you heathenous wretch! <clears throat> So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> not sure what happened to my voice there. <laughs> Quiet, you! Anyways, at this point, we've run into a bit of an issue that becomes apparent as we fight Cyrus in Celestic Town. His team, at least for now, is no problem, but the amount of mandatory battles in this stretch of the game means that the best is going to overlevel before we can get to the next gym leader. So, it is with a deep sense of shame that House Gar must reach out for help. It's perhaps unsurprising that during our quest to conquer Sinnoh, we have not made very many allies. Most of the other noble houses have turned away, and it would be foolish to say that House Gar would do anything else were the situation reversed. But one house rose above the petty squabbles and extended an olive branch when the others refused. Little one of House Doof agreed to hold an XP share, thereby brunting 50% of the XP burden and allowing the best to safely make it through the rival fight in Canalave City and all five mandatory trainers in Byron's gym without going over the level cap. House Gar is forever in debt to House Doof for their unabashed spirit of generosity. May we someday repay the favor. Earthquakes take out all of Byron's Pokemon, though we do need to dodge a freeze from Steelix's Ice Fang, since he's bulky enough to survive the hit. But since the best does indeed stay unfrozen, it's an easy victory for badge number six. But what is sure to not be an easy victory is the fight against the Snow Queen herself, Candace. Her ice types are House Gar's one true weakness, seemingly perfectly engineered to make our campaign impossible. Let's break it down. First is the icy devil Sneasel, who knows the priority move Ice Shard. And since she doesn't know any other ice moves, we're guaranteed to get hit by one before we take her out. Next is the snowy sow Piloswine, who's too bulky to go down in one shot, which is particularly problematic since she knows Avalanche, a move that doubles in power if the user takes damage. The coniferous monster that is a bomb of snow also knows Avalanche, though she can at least be one shot by Firefang as long as we connect with the 95% accurate move. But unfortunately, she'll also set up the Hail, giving Candace's final Pokemon, the Frozen Demon Frostlass, not only perfectly accurate blizzards, but also an evasion boost via Snow Cloak. This fight is impossible to guarantee. But after hours in the war room, I came up with a battle plan that would give House Guard the best chance at surviving the hardest challenge of our quest thus far. Against Candace's Sneasel, I have the best hold a Yachi Berry to have the power of Sneasel's first Ice Shard. With this, the best can set up a Swords Dance on turn one, and thankfully dodge the crit on turn two before taking the kill with an Earthquake. With the attack boost, Earthquake now one-shots Piloswine, and Firefang, which does connect, one-shots Snow. But now, against Frostlass, we gotta connect through Snow Cloak. It's an 80% chance, like hitting a stone edge. The fate of House Gar comes down to this one single turn. But today does not mark the end of our royal house, for with an earthquake, the frozen demon falls and the Snow Queen has been defeated. Long may our flags fly, for our greatest enemy is officially behind us. Or so I thought. For next is the final confrontation with Team Galactic, and once again our enemy threatens us with an icy demise. 
Cyrus has a Weavile who we simply cannot outspeed. The best sassy nature may have helped against Fantina's Miss Magius, but it's biting us in the ass here. Cyrus also has a Gyarados with Ice Fang and a Crobat that will also outspeed, so much like against Candace, the odds are stacked against us, and I had to return to the War Room to devise the perfect strategy so that my one-man army could make it out of this alive. Cyrus leads with Houndoom, so I set up a substitute. This causes Houndoom's Will-O-Wisp to fail, but with our sassy nature and some special defense investment, Dark Pulse almost never breaks our sub, ensuring that we would have had at least a few chances to set up the necessary swords dances and take the kill with Earthquake with a substitute at least partially still intact. Unfortunately for Cyrus, he gets caught spamming Will-O-Wisp, meaning that I can comfortably set up a second Swords Dance and still take the KO with our very first sub fully healthy. That was best case scenario, since Weavile comes in second, and of course easily breaks the sub with an Ice Punch as expected. But then our Earthquake gets the one shot, and with the best still at nearly full HP, Cyrus's remaining three Pokemon shouldn't be a problem. Dragon Claw one shots Gyarados and Honchkrow, so the only way that this goes poorly is if Crobat nails us with a Confuse Ray, and we hit ourselves in confusion. But he opts for Air Slash instead, which means that one last Dragon Claw takes out the bat and wins us the battle. Cyrus's plan for world domination is no more, and our quest for sovereign reign over Sinnoh, totally different from what Cyrus was doing by the way, so don't lump us together, is almost complete. Though the best could easily kill the Lord of Darkness Giratina, we can't afford the XP, so a simple nod of acknowledge power is all we can do before running from the battle. Four Earthquakes are all it takes to beat Volkner and obtain the final gym badge, meaning that we can sweep through every Pokemon in Victory Road, including, regrettably, some brainwashed defectors from House Gar itself. It's hard to blame them for their betrayal, they were corrupted by a false prophet. But nevertheless, they must still be vanquished like any other opponent. Though thy poisoned body be slain, may your soul be purified in death and find safe passage to a reunion with the ancestors of thy true natal house. With that, we've made it to the Pokemon League. It's the final challenge, the final test to prove our might. It's all that stands in the way of House Gar's uncontested rule. The best is ready. He's perfectly trained to strike down every threat and prove without question that Garchomp is the greatest Pokemon of all time. Let's do this. Our first foe is a Aaron, who leads with Yanmega. So I set up a Swords Dance as he goes for a double team to boost his evasion. A speed boost means that he can outspeed and hit us off Bug Buzz, but with an Aerial Ace, we guarantee the kill on the follow-up. And from here, a Aaron is duh done. Earthquake kills Drapion, Aerial Aces kill Heracross and Vespiquen, before finally a second Earthquake kills Scizor and wins us the battle. Next is Bertha, and you'll never guess what we do here. We set up two Swords Dances and then sweep her entire team with Dragon Claw and Earthquake. Not much else we can do since her Glysaur has Ice Fang and Rhyperior has Avalanche, so we needed to ensure the one-shots. But don't worry, this Elite Four isn't just gonna be setting up Swords Dances and sweeping. Because against Flint, we don't even need to set up Swords Dances to one-shot all of his Pokemon with Earthquake. But yeah, against Lucian, we do indeed set up a Swords Dance. What can I say? The best loves to dance, and I'm not about to tell a Garchomp that he can't dance. That's how Cousin Willy lost an arm. And now the whole family just calls him One-Armed Willy, which I always thought was kind of insensitive, but he seems to lean into it, so like, maybe it's insensitive to not call him One-Armed Willy if that's what he wants to be called. Then again, maybe he's only leaning into it because everyone else started calling him that, and it was better to accept it than to feel ostracized by the family, but deep down he actually hates it and is only pretending to like it for the sake of everyone else. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me, One-Armed Willy has always been a people pleaser and put the needs of others before his own, even when we were kids. Should I talk to him in private and ask him about this, or would that just make him more uncomfortable? Anyways, that's Lucian defeated, which means we've made it to Cynthia. The final challenge, or rather the final fight of the final challenge that is the Pokemon League. As the music swells, the best and I prepare for the worst. Cynthia leads with Spiritomb, so for the last time, the best sets his soul free with the power of dance. Shadow Ball hits for a chunk of damage, but then on the following turn, an earthquake takes the KO. 
That immediately brings in Cynthia's Garchomp, chief defector of House Gar. She's the reason House Gar fell apart in the first place so many years ago. She sought glory independent of her familial lineage, choosing to pave her own path as Cynthia's ace instead of serving her house. And as a result, our once great dynasty crumbled. For a time, Cynthia's Garchomp did well for herself. I mean, she was famous. She was beloved and feared. But abandoning her own blood to do it? That sin cannot go unpunished. Her story ends here. For with a single dragon claw, we slice right through the heretic and cleanse the once shameful stain from House Gar's legacy. So all that remains are Garchomp's four feeble teammates. Milotic is one shot by Earthquake, Togekiss by Dragon Claw, Lucario by Earthquake, and finally Roserade by one last Earthquake. Cynthia is vanquished, we've made it to the Hall of Fame, and House Gar reigns supreme over all of Sinnoh. Cold hard proof that Garchomp is, in fact, the greatest Pokemon that ever was, and nothing can take that away. Now in future videos, you might hear me say some things. Things like, Garchomp is stupid, or Flygon is cooler than Garchomp, or Garchomp FJ kidnapped me and locked me in a basement so that he could assume my identity and release a video to fuel his obsessive pro-Garchomp dogma. But just know that I don't mean those things. This video right here is the truth. This video is how I really feel. So just remember that. And as always, don't forget to play around critical hits.